AZ-900 Episode 6 is here. These tricky questions that show up on 80% of real exams. By the end, you'll know exactly what Microsoft tests. Question 31. How are policies and initiatives are related in Azure? This question is testing your knowledge of Azure's governance hierarchy. Think of it like organizing rules in a company. We need to understand how individual rules, policies, and rule bundles initiatives work together in Azure's management structure. The options are A. An initiative assigns a policy to a resource. B. Policies are a set of multiple initiatives. C. Initiatives are a set of multiple policies. D. A policy assign an initiative to a resource. Here's a helpful analogy. Think of Azure policy like individual safety rules at a construction site. An initiative would be like a complete safety handbook that contains multiple related rules bundled together. For example, a data security initiative might contain policies for encryption, access controls, and backup requirements, all grouped together for easier management. The correct answer is, initiatives are a set of multiple policies. Perfect. Let's break this down step by step. In Azure governance, we work from small to large. Policies are individual rules, and initiatives are collections of related policies. Think of it this way. If you want to enforce comprehensive security across your organization, you wouldn't want to assign 20 individual policies one by one. Instead, you create an initiative called Security Baseline that bundles all those security policies together. Then you can assign this entire initiative to your resources with just one action. Why the other options are incorrect. Option A and D. These get the assignment direction wrong. Initiatives and policies don't assign each other to resources. Administrators assign them to resources. Option B, this reverses the relationship. Policies don't contain initiatives. It's the other way around. Remember, policies equals individual rules, initiatives equals rule bundles. This makes management much easier when you need consistent governance across multiple resources. To get the free PDF or mock test, comment PDF or mock or both, I will share the downloadable link within the next 24 hours. Question 32. Which of the following is Microsoft responsible for when using Azure Virtual Machines? This question is testing your understanding of Azure's shared responsibility model. When you use cloud services, some security tasks are handled by Microsoft and others are your responsibility as the customer. Think of it like renting an apartment. The building owner handles some things and you handle others. The options are A, physical security, B, identity and access management, C, Application controls? D, network controls. Here's a real world comparison. When you rent office space in a building, the building owner secures the physical building, locks, security guards, fire systems, but you're responsible for your office's internal security, who gets keys to your office, what software you install, how you manage your employee access. Azure works similarly. The correct answer is physical security? Excellent. Let's understand the shared responsibility model step by step. Physical security is always Microsoft's responsibility because they own and operate the data centers where your virtual machines run. Microsoft handles everything at the physical layer, securing the buildings, managing access to server rooms, environmental controls, power systems, and physical network infrastructure. You can't walk into a Microsoft data center. That's their job to protect. Why the other options are your responsibility. Option B, identity and access management. You decide who can access your VMs and what permissions they have. Option C, application controls. You choose what software to install and how to configure it. Option D, network controls. You configure your virtual networks, security groups, and firewall rules. Remember the rule. Microsoft secures the cloud infrastructure. You secure what you put in the cloud. Physical security is foundational infrastructure, so Microsoft owns that completely. If this video is helping you, support us by hitting the like button, and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Question 33, what is the impact of assigning owner permissions at the level of an Azure subscription? The question checks what owner means at the subscription scope. You need to know what control the person gets inside that subscription and all its child resources. The options are A. The assignee is granted full rights over the Azure AD tenant, including creating new user accounts. B. The assignee is granted full rights over the enterprise account, including creating new subscription. C. The assignee is able to bypass any Azure policy assignments, which are targeted at the subscription level or below. 
D, the assignee has full rights at the subscription level and below, including changing permissions. Think of a subscription like a whole office building. Making someone owner of the building lets them manage every floor, resource groups, and every room, resources. They can also hand out keys, permissions. But they can't control city records, Azure AD tenant, or other buildings, other subscriptions. The correct answer is, the assignee has full rights at the subscription level and below, including changing permissions. Let's understand step by step. Owner is the highest RBAC role at a chosen scope. At the subscription scope, it grants full management of the subscription, all resource groups, and all resources beneath it. It also allows managing access, granting and removing RBAC permissions within that scope. Why the other options are incorrect. Option A, Azure AD, Enter ID, tenant management needs tenant level roles like global administrator. Subscription owner does not grant tenant wide user management. Option B, Enterprise agreement and billing actions, such as creating new subscriptions, require EA billing roles, not subscription owner. Option C, owners do not bypass Azure policy. Policies still enforce their effects unless the owner changes or removes policy assignments slash exemptions where they have rights. Question 34, a company wants to start using Azure. They want to deploy a number of resources to their Azure subscription. They want to be informed if the costs of Azure resources goes beyond a certain threshold. Which of the following can help achieve this? This question is about cost monitoring and getting notified when spending hits a limit. The company wants an alert system for their Azure bill, not performance or health monitoring. The options are A, create an alert in Azure Monitor. B, create a budget in Azure Cost Management. C, create an alert in Azure Advisor. D create a cost tag for the resource group. Think of your mobile phone plan. You want to get a text message when you've used 80% of your monthly data allowance. Azure budgets work the same way for cloud spending. They watch your bill and send alerts when you approach or exceed your spending limits. The correct answer is create a budget in Azure Cost Management. Perfect. Azure Cost Management budgets are specifically designed for this purpose. You set a spending amount for a time period, monthly, quarterly, or yearly. Then configure threshold alerts at different percentages like 50%, 80%, or 100% of your budget. When your actual or forecasted costs hit these thresholds, you get email notifications within an hour. You can set up to five different thresholds and five email addresses per budget. Why the other options are incorrect. Option A, Azure Monitor alerts track resource performance metrics like CPU usage or storage, not billing costs. Option C, Azure Advisor gives cost optimization recommendations but doesn't send spending threshold alerts. Option D, cost tags help organize and categorize expenses for reporting, but they don't generate alerts when spending exceeds limits. Question 35, a company wants to set up users in their Azure account. They have segregated their users into groups. They now want to ensure they set the right permissions for users and administrators accordingly. They need to manage the permissions effectively. Solution, you use role-based access control, RBAC. Does this meet the goal? This is asking whether RBAC is the right solution for managing user permissions effectively in Azure. The company has users organized in groups and wants proper permission management, so we need to confirm if RBAC handles this scenario. The options are A, yes, B, no. Think of RBAC like a company's job role system just like how a manager role gets certain permissions while employee role gets different ones. RBAC assigns specific permissions to roles, then assigns those roles to users or groups. This makes permission management much cleaner than giving individual permissions to each person. The correct answer is yes, absolutely correct. Azure RBAC is specifically designed for this exact scenario. It's the authorization system built on Azure Resource Manager that provides fine-grained access management to Azure resources. RBAC works perfectly with groups. You can assign roles to entire groups rather than individual users, making management much more efficient. Here's why RBAC meets all their goals. It allows you to assign different permission levels to users and administrators through built-in roles like owner, contributor, reader, and user access administrator. You can assign these roles directly to the groups they've already created, so when someone joins or leaves a group, their permissions automatically adjust. 
RBAC follows the principle of least privilege, ensuring users only get access to what they need for their specific role. Why this solution works. RBAC operates on who can do what where, security principles, users' groups, get role definitions, permissions at specific scopes, subscription, resource group, or resource level. This gives them the effective permission management they're looking for while working seamlessly with their existing group structure. That's episode six done. You just tackled real exam questions that show up on 80% of AZ-900 tests. Episode seven drops next week with the toughest networking scenarios. Don't miss it. Grab your free PDF and mock test from the description. Hit subscribe for the full series, and I'll see you in episode seven.